Hello everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and my craft table. So this is the second day of the Teacher Appreciation Week series. And today we are going to be making um, craft board candy boxes. So we are going to take craft board and I am just using the Cricut brand. And in the sampler, you actually get quite a few I mean, you actually get a lot of sheets, but you get black and then the craft board color and then white. And you can see I have used a lot. I haven't used the black yet, but what I like about it is that you can make three dimensional um, things that are a lot more sturdy than if you were just using some cardstock. And there are 10 of each color in this sampler pack and all of them are 12 by 12 sheets. Um, I absolutely love them. I use them a lot. So we're going to be using the Maker 3 today, a fine point blade, and a scoring stylus. Um, I will be cutting these out on the 12 by 12 standard grit mat. Now I have to tell you, these are my new mats here, so they're pretty, they're pretty standard. And then I have my older mats, and I actually haven't thrown these away simply because they still have the, you know, they're still tacky and sticky. However, for the heavier material, they, they're not as sticky as they, as the regular ones. So I mainly use these for when I'm working with paper crafts because they're not as sticky and I don't need a light grip mat. I can just use these older ones. And so I, that's why I have here the washi tape, just to make sure that these craft board pages stay down. And something that I've started doing is I have started dating when I get my mat. That way I, I kind of know like how long these have been around. So the first two I got in December and then these two I just got at the end of February. And I think that's just a great idea um, a great way to keep track of your mats and how long you've had them. These will probably get retired soon. However, they're still functional and I just hate to throw them away. Plus, I don't have any light grip mats yet and those are doing the job so I don't seem to need to buy any and I will probably buy those when these are ready to be retired. The other thing is we have some several pieces of vinyl. So on one side of the vinyl, we are going to use these colors to do a monogram, one for each teacher. And mainly that's because um, each teacher likes different kinds of candy and it'll just be easier for my daughter to deliver them to her teachers if they, let, if they already have a monogram initial on them. And then on the other side of the of the candy box. We're going to be using the black adhesive vinyl as well, but this time it'll be a little sign that says treats and it is so cute. I can't wait. So we're going to make a total of seven and let's go ahead and head over to design space so that I can show you the design that I chose, the monogram that I'm using, and the treat sign that I am using, and then we will start cutting and assembling the candy boxes. Okay, here I am in Design Space, and I have actually already pulled up the project um, on screen, but I will show you where I got all of these elements. So this is the candy box, and it does include the scoring lines for us, which is great. And I will be using a scoring stylus since I don't have a scoring blade or a scoring wheel. Then, and we're going to make seven of these, by the way. Then we have the treats. Um, little sign. I'll show you where we got that. And then these are the monograms that I am using on the other side of the box. And I'll show you how I made those. So first I, what I did is I went to projects. Where is project? There it is. And I just searched for candy box. I just chose to do a, a basic candy box so it looks like this. I click on this. Let's see. So it looked like this when it's finished. All right. And of course, this designer chose to um, embellish it with paper and make some more coloring on the outside. All right. So this is what it looks like when you bring it in. I did resize it just a little bit. 
So this designer made this candy box using these designs here. So I think that's just really ingenious. And so to Mrs. Margaret Berger, I commend her. Okay, so I pulled that into my canvas. The other thing is I went to images. Let's see, sweet treats. And here we go. So I chose this one. Finally, I went over to Monogram. Now for Monogram, these here, I went under Modern and I put in the one initial. And then if you scroll through Modern, you can actually choose different Monogram styles. In fact, there's, I mean, you could spend all day creating monograms. But I just chose this one here because it is a little straight and a little curvy, kind of like the treats sign. And my daughter really liked it, so we went ahead and chose that one. So I made one monogram for every single teacher. You, you do have to make them in the monogram maker and then pull it into your canvas. I can't just put the monogram down in my canvas and then duplicate it and change the initial. It, it doesn't really work that way. Um, okay, so on my screen, you can see how I have all seven teachers and their initials. And I'm going to be cutting these out on the colored vinyl. And these are only going to be cut one time. When I go to do make, I'm actually going to be uh, changing the number of projects in the make screen because I'm going to need seven of these and I'm actually going to need seven of these. So my thought was that I would have the treats here on one side and then I would put on the other side the teacher monogram. And I just thought that would be a very simple way to decorate the box, keep it, you know, not very complicated, but then also add an element of personalization. I chose um, all of the teachers had given us their favorite colors, so we're kind of going with some of those. And then this would just be the personalized part. Now inside, we will be putting their favorite candy. So each teacher is going to have their own unique box as far as candy is concerned. The first thing that I want to do is I am going to, um, I think what I'm going to do is for right now, I'm going to hide, I'm going to group these just because then I can hide them all at one time, just like that. And then I have two choices. I could duplicate this seven times, but when I go to the make screen, I want to duplicate this candy box seven times. So I'm just going to go ahead and wait until I go to the make screen. And when we go here, we're going to be using a mat. I actually am going to go back and resize it just a little bit. I do not have a 12 by 24 mat. So let's go back and we're going to resize this just just a smidge. Okay, so I'm going to try the 11.47 and all I did was grab the corner and resize it and I'm going to click make and it actually doesn't ask me for a 12 by 24 mat. I could choose that over here if I wanted to but I'm just going to leave it at the 12 by 12 mat and here it is. And you can see where it looks like, for future reference, I need to remember that even though my paper and my mat are, are 12 by 12 and bigger, that I need to keep my projects below 11.5. That way it won't ask me for a 12 by 24 mat. Then on the next mat, you can see where it has the black vinyl here for treats. So what I want to do is we're going to go and change the project copies to seven and hit apply. And when I do that, it is going to create on my screen seven white mats. Those are all for the craft board. 
and then it will create one mat for the vinyl and this will be the black adhesive vinyl and I had cut a piece of vinyl that was like you know a 9 by 12 size I'm actually going to just give myself a little bit of space for the weeding so I'm going to I like to cut them apart and so here we go I think that'll be plenty and I'll have my seven vinyl pieces that will cut out all at one time so this is fantastic okay so I am going to get these cut out so I'm going to start with all of the candy boxes first since I actually have my mats set up and ready to go and I'll hit continue Okay, so on the next screen you can see where it connected to my maker 3 and I am choosing the craft board now I already have craft board highlight or bookmarked however if you don't and you are going to use it and you need to go find it you just click on browse all materials and you literally can just type in craft and you'll see where it comes up all right so I'll just go back here I'm going to be using the craft board and default pressure now I'm going to go ahead and let it be default pressure because I'm going to edit my tools so I want to edit my tools the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the scoring stylus I don't have either of these wheels so I will choose the scoring stylus and that will go in clamp a and then I do finally have a deep point blade so I'm going to go ahead and click that for the cut feature I'm going to hit apply and so you can see where it has confirmed for me that we are going to load the scoring stylus in clamp A, the deep point blade in clamp B, and I'm going to click remember material settings. And that way I don't have to choose this every single time I go to another mat. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to load each mat. And when I do, it'll prompt me with the flashing arrows here to press that button. It will draw the mat into the machine. It will measure and scan everything to make sure all the materials are the correct size. Then the play button will flash and I will hit play and it will cut all of them out. I have all of the boxes cut out and pulled off the mats. And I also have the black treat squares um, cut out as well. I wanted to come in and address a couple of things as far as the monogram is concerned. I changed all of my monograms to the same color so that I could cut them all out on one mat and I will just place the designs where I'm going to place the particular colors on the mat and that way everything will match up the way I want. But I wanted to show you that if I click make as is, so I had hid the other items, but if I click make then this is what happens. So when you are working with monograms, or actually when you were working with any kind of design really, double check your make screen before you do anything else, or actually if you want to save time you can do this before, but when I come over here to make, the outline is no longer around the monogram. So this means that they have to be attached. And I just wanted to show you that because sometimes when I am in a hurry, I forget to attach everything. So I'm really just going to click on each monogram and I'm going to come down here to my layers panel at the bottom and I'm going to click attach. And that way when I click make, they will all be the way they need to be. And then we can decide where we're going to put the final and therefore where we're going to move the little monograms. So this time when I click make, everything is the way I want. Okay, so a couple of things. This teacher, is there. they really like black, so we're just going to use black vinyl for their monogram. And this teacher is going to be getting the dark blue. And this teacher is going to be getting like the salmon orangey color. So the next thing is I have these two teachers they like purple. That is their favorite color. Um, no, I'm sorry. These two teachers like blue and these two teachers like purple. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave these two teachers alone right here 
and these two I've moved over here. These are going to get the light blue vinyl. These will get the purple vinyl. And then I'm going to come in and I'm just going to move the others so that I can place their vinyl on the on the mat, not touching anything else. So, let's see, that's three. I'll just place this one right here. And then I can place this one. So if that's three, and then that's three there. Okay, that covers that. And then this one. So I think that will cover everything. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to place my vinyl on the mat in this formation. This will be purple, these will be light blue, and then the single colors I'll just have down the middle. Then when I click continue, I will have to make sure that I select the vinyl and not the craft board which is actually something that I did remember at the very last second on the previous screen is at the very bottom for the black vinyl. I did have to come over and change. There was a little arrow and I had to come over here and change it from craft board to the premium vinyl, just like that. And of course my tools were fine. It just noticed that it didn't have any scoring lines and it just needed the fine point blade. Okay. So, I am going to get that mat ready and get those cut out and then we'll return to the overhead cam. We have everything cut out. These are the little boxes. These are the treat labels. And I actually have gone ahead and weeded them because I wanted to save time on the video. And then I have all of the teacher monograms. So those are all weeded and ready to go. And then I have one done already. So this is what it looks like when it's finished. And it's, you know, it is small, but that's okay because one, the, I don't have a ginormous mat, so I couldn't make a super long box, but um, this will probably be like day one of the teacher appreciation week. And so we've got the teacher monogram on one side and we've got the treats on the other. And then my daughter will be able to fill each box with the treats that are the favorite for each teacher um, individually, and then she'll know exactly which one goes with which teacher. And then it's just a cute little sweet, no oh, pun intended, uh, cute little sweet idea to start the week out, and then each day they will get another little gift with each day becoming more and more um, a little more elaborate. So the thing about these boxes is, is, and I had put two of them together while everything was cutting is because I just wanted to see like what would work best. And it is not a big deal to put the monogram and the treats onto the box while it is constructed. But I really do think that to be honest, it's probably a lot easier to put it on the box while everything is flat. The scoring lines, I mean, they are pretty faint, but that's okay because um, like if my scoring line is here, I'm actually going to fold it back on itself. And I do have a bone folder. So I'm gonna just take you through one full box, like how I put it together. So I, ha I folded it in half. And then this one, I folded along that score line. And I'm just gently um, folding it down with the bone folder. I don't want to press too hard because, you know, you don't want the paper to, uh, or the craft board to become too scored. And then it looks kind of weird. I don't know. But anyway, so now I have all of the sides and it'll go like this. Then we have the bottoms. So I'll just fold. These are actually the easiest ones to fold, but I will go along them with the bone folder just to make the folds very crisp. And again, I'm not really, I'm just doing one pass and I'm not doing, um, I'm not doing the pressure really hard. 
The other thing is on the top, along the top, these get folded, these little front tab parts. Oh, and it went a little off there. Okay, there we go. Okay, and then what I noticed when I did the boxes is that it was actually kind of helpful. I'm gonna unfold all this now that I've done all the scoring. Is these come back a little bit more like that. And then I did bring these back just a little bit. And that's so that they, they kind of have an indention here to, to fit on the side. Okay, so now my, I, my thought was that going ahead and putting the monogram on one side and the treats on the other while it is flat might work a little bit better. So we're going to give that a go and then, and then I'll show you how I glued it all together. So the scoring Let's line. talk transfer tape. This is craft board and so it is essentially a paper surface. This is a paper transfer tape. Now these are, uh, this is grid lines and it is opaque. It's not like I can see through it clearly, but I can see enough. Um, this is paper transfer tape. I got it from Expressions Vinyl. I do have one that doesn't have any grid lines and it's about half the size, but this is really, really gentle. The grid line, and I'm, I'm just lining it up down here along the bottom of the monogram, and mainly that is just to help me keep it straight, I guess, and I'm pretty good at eyeballing things. Being a geometry teacher, I can, I can draw a straight line slowly, but usually I can draw a fairly straight line without a ruler, and then my kids are like, how do you do that? Like, well, I've had, you know, 40 years of practice. But anyway, um, and sometimes the inners of these letters. Oh, no, it did, it did good. Okay, so here is the B. Move all this out of the way. I tend to put everything too close to me, and then I wonder why I have issues. All right, so, all right, this is lined up pretty good. And then I... I'm just really kind of eyeballing where I think it is, you know, centered horizontally and then vertically, you know, I know that before I do that, let me pause for one moment. There is another fold. There we go. I forgot about this row of folds. See, I get so excited. And then, now if it's just me, it's not a big deal because I can be like, oh, hey, forgot that. But showing you, then I feel a little bad. So, okay, there, everything is folded and scored. Then I put the monogram onto the transfer tape and using the paper transfer tape. And so I'm literally just going to line it up horizontally to look like it's in the center and then also the best I can vertically and I will be honest sometimes it's helpful if you stand up over your project and get a complete bird's eye view okay then just burnish that down a little bit and then I pull the transfer tape off look how smooth that is so this this paper transfer tape is really low tack. I just think it's great. I'm just going to put it here for right now. And it doesn't stick to a lot of things. So that's kind of the beauty of that. So here is the monogram. And then I'm going to come in on this side. And I'm going to do the same thing. And let's see. So I'm lining up the grid of the transfer tape along the bottom edge of this curly cue, not completely down at the end of the, of the treats, but just along that little curly cue. 
and then there's a couple little circles that I need to make sure go down and then we have a heart okay so this black vinyl is um, actually from Michaels it's the make market brand and it's okay it's not bad at all this one is um, not glossy this was Cricut glossy premium removable but um, I like either one this almost has like a chalkboard um, look to it because it is matte really like that you could do some really cute chalk chalkboard looking projects all right so that circle stayed down and all of that very nice I tend to lose the dots to my eyes and my middles to my E's. And it is a little, mm, I don't know, I guess it's user error. That's okay. So I just use my weeding tool when necessary. And if things seem to want to stick to their carrier sheet, it's almost more like static clean, you know, because it's, still well it's april but it's kind of wintry here all right so i will go ahead and stand up for this one and this is kind of easy because the heart just kind of lines up in the middle and we just put that down and again mostly because of the heart and the little circles i don't have to do a lot of pressure for the burnishing and then it just comes right off just like that so this is just fantastic all right so now each treat box is you know like this which is good and definitely i had made this one three-dimensional and then i put the um, vinyl on it it wasn't bad but i worried that i was going to kind of indent the box which i, I did okay then this I showed you where I put it on before folding it up and I think I like that better so when I do the rest of these I will absolutely be putting it on without having it folded okay so here's how the box folds up the first thing is, is these tabs are going to get glue on them and then I am going to glue them to the bottom of the box like so Okay, then this tab right here will get glue and it will go right inside there. And then we will glue the bottom and fold it up like that. So it's super, super simple. three down and four to go so I think what I'm gonna do is I will speed everything up a little bit that way you can see the finished product a lot sooner
we are now done. We've got seven teacher treat boxes and they look so cute. This is going to be really, really nice because each one will have the exact candy that is the favorite of each teacher. And then they have a little personalization on the back. You could do this for any occasion. You could do this for any group. This is just a really neat thing. You don't even have to put candy in it. You could, you could put anything in here. So anyway, I hope that this was inspiring to you to make something special for the teachers in your life or maybe special people in your work group, some nurses, police officers, etc. I hope that this was informative. These are great. Craft board is really, really fun. I love it. And it is definitely something I use a lot in my, in my craft space. And we will be back with video number three. That will be, well, actually we will have three more videos for teacher appreciation week. And so in the meantime, make sure that you enjoy a really good cup of coffee and happy crafting. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber and don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day and as always, happy crafting.